Hey guys, welcome back to the Battle for a Healthy Voice. I'm Sunny Galt. This is David Moyer, our vocal coach. And today, David, we are leaning on your expertise. We have another video for vocal coach reactions. And we're talking about the Bee Gees. Everybody loves the Bee Gees. They have such a unique sound. Oh, they do. And they are so fun. <laughs> Yeah. I just love the Bee Gees. Even when they were a younger group back in the 60s and they had their low voices before they excessively used compression and, and ended up losing their voices, then they reinvented their sound, came back in the disco time, you know, with all those great songs. Yeah, it was interesting because David actually was watching a video earlier and it had some of that stuff from the Bee Gees when they sang in their like their lower, lower range, range yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know that they did that. When you think of the Bee Gees, you just think of, you know, the falsetto-y kind of if you take a If you take a listen to yeah. How Can You Mend a Broken Heart, okay. that really shows it because it shows shows kind of once you get trained enough with bel con pure bel canto you'll notice i keep saying bel canto because that's what it was before it went south and that's why we teach pure bel canto we got to get it's back to correction. the pureness the pureness of it. The purity yeah of it. anyway they you can hear the voice changing it's kind of like um the vibrato is really slow and sort of tremolo-ish mm -hmm. and then they go up huh tell me how? And that's kind of how they sound. Yeah. They got that airy sort of they sound. They do. And then finally, it's gone. They're gone for a while, and then they come back with things like Staying Alive, uh -huh. and, you know, and the song you're going to go over with me today. That's right. Okay, yep. before we dive into that, though, David mentioned Pure Bel Canto. We have created a course that teaches you guys the history of Pure Bel Canto, as well as the benefits and, you know, some of the, the methods and things like that. So it kind of gets you started in learning more about Pure Bel Canto and all of our YouTube videos videos we talk about pure bel canto so if you guys want more information on that go to our website of course it's purebelcanto.com and check that out so we've got an online video course that you can take as an introductory to that and dave and i we're going to keep talking about this and all the you videos we, we do please do that because i'm the guy who knew how to sing right chose to sing wrong three surgeries later i can't sing like i used to I only have part of a range. And that's what happens. And, yeah. and, and it's not just you, David. There's a lot of artists out there. And a lot of times, this isn't publicized, guys. So if you're like, I've never heard of this before. Listen, they're having surgeries, and then they're not bouncing back. They're really not. You know, if you listen to some of our other videos, like we talk about Adele a lot. Yeah, because like now that new song she released. She has that new song. She just did a live concert. I think it was called One Night Only, something like that. But everything is in a lower register now. In She's fact, not I going just for had those a lady big comment. Notes. She saw the concert. Yeah. And she said, that's not Adele. I know. Right. Her voice is much lower. She doesn't use high notes. What's <laughs> going on, David? And I don't teach her voice. She's just somebody who's one of my... I do handyman jobs, too. And she's just one of those people. Right. She just said, hey, it doesn't sound like Adele. Well, it can't sound like Adele. Right. Because she's ruined her vocal cords mm -hmm. and she's had so many surgeries. Her original approach that became signature oh. to people is what caused... Her vocal destruction. Well, talking about a signature approach, the Bee Gees definitely yeah, have absolutely. a signature sound, mm -hmm. right? And so, mm -hmm. in general, you're a fan of the Bee Gees. You, you know, you dance sure. to their music, oh, maybe yeah. a little bit. <laughs> I remember, and you're okay. a dancer. I am. Yeah. I have the background in there, so you know, you might see me doing a little bit of this as yeah. we <laughs> play a couple clips. So we've got two clips that I want to show you guys today, and that we're going to analyze. Okay. The first one is a slower song from the Bee Gees. It is called "How Deep Is Your Love." Yeah, that's a great tune. And then, of course, we had to have Staying Alive in there, too. Oh, so that'll absolutely. be the second clip that we do. But let's play the first clip, and then, David, I want to get your reaction. Okay. I could listen to that over and over. That know, makes me happy. Do you know what, Sonny? <laughs> uh -huh. I watched all their mouths, and somebody got to them after they wrecked their voices. Uh -huh. I know it. And they studied kind of what I teach, because I don't see the mouths really opening wide. And then also when they went to... How deep is your love? They were singing on the breath. Although, honestly, this isn't a live performance. This is their video. Oh. So 
It would be nice to have a live performance it so sure you could see the see difference. If there's a difference. This is pre-produced. Okay. Yeah. So that may be a reason that their their mouths aren't open as much. Maybe they're just not as good as lip syncing as other that people. That could be true. We'd have to see the <laughs> yeah. live video. Yeah. But, but the evidence, if since it's probably lip sync, let's hope that when we see the live performance, we yeah. see the same approach. Yeah. But you do hear this more breathy kind of sound coming from them. Um, what are some of the other things that you noticed? Well... I, I haven't heard them sing in their upper range yet, okay. so I don't hear a lot. Well, I'll tell you one thing I noticed yeah. is I don't hear the kind of compression that I would hear in Bruno Mars, yeah. that I would hear in uh, uh, um, uh, Freddie Mercury, yeah. that I would hear in Mick Jagger. I don't hear it right now. Now, am I going to hear it when they go up? Because we're living in a world of yeah. fools. Yeah. It's almost pop, kind of pop. Bell I Con would classify this Conto. as pop. I'd yeah. pop and I'd say almost kind of pure bel canto. Okay. Even though, and the reason it's airy is because that's what's left over. That's kind of like me. Oh. How deep is your love? Well, that's convenient yeah. that they made their signature they something work. that worked with it. They made it voice. a new signature sound. <laughs> okay. Yep. Well, let's play Staying Alive. You want those high notes, David? You bet you. You're let's go hear to it. Staying Alive. Okay. You bet. <laughs> That's about fifth, fifth gear is what it is. Hear the air? Now we know that's pre-produced, but... No, they're still keeping their mouth. Let's see what happens on the line when they hold it. That's still not real wide, but it is wider than a pure ball concert. So definitely some high notes in that yeah. one, right? Yeah, my brother and I used to do that. Stay alive! Of course. <laughs> now, I don't have the same sound I used to because the fluid that is below my lining on my vocal bands yeah. has gone. So all I have is a dry reed sound. But we used to do that all the time, and the kids would get really excited in 1977, 78, all over the United States school programs. Could you hear the compression, though, when they went higher? Could you hear that? To be honest, yes, there's some compression. But not as but much not, as you would hear nowadays. Not as much, you would, not even close to what you hear today. Yeah. And that's why I think they could do it. And also, if you listen to Bruno Mars, when he goes up high on Count On Me, mm -hmm. you'll hear the same thing. Okay. Because he's using his upper gears more healthily than he's using his lower gears. Well, you don't hear any artists that sound like the Bee Gees, no. right? No. And... They were able to do it, but that is, like I said, they made it part of their unique sound. Mm -hmm. Most artists aren't doing that. Most artists, I feel, are going for that more bold, belty kind mm -hmm. of sound. Mm -hmm. But they're they're known for that breathy, eerie, mm -hmm. and so therefore they can use pure bel canto or, you know. And get away with it. And get In away words, with because it. Because it became their signature sound. Right. Now, I was thinking, you know, if you're a professional singer, and you may be, I'm talking to you now. You study pure bel canto, it may change your sound, but what you have to understand is, is you may come back with a sound that is reinvented and people learn to enjoy, and then you develop, if you will, a new audience that appreciates that. Yeah, just like the Bee Gees did. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm glad to know that they're using more of that bel canto style. Yeah, so. I never heard them not be able to sing. They just, yeah, several of them passed away, and I think only one is still left alive. Right. But, yeah, but but uh, but it wasn't, nope, it was not uh, what I would call really heavy compression. Yes, there's some compression because of the genre. You, If you sing pure bel canto, I don't think you could use it in this genre. Okay. You have to use... You train with it, mm -hmm. and then you add, you add the percentage of compression mm -hmm. okay. necessary to convey the genre. Unless it's rock or heavy metal, and then, then you, you throw it all out the window. A lot of compression. And <laughs> We're going to do a video uh -huh. on that. Oh, how, yeah. how do you apply pure bel canto when you're singing you those kind of styles? Because yep. that is very tricky. Like ACDC, uh, Highway to Hell. Oh, my goodness. I just was helping a boy on his guitar lead with that yesterday. <laughs> oh, my, you've got to hear that singer. <laughs> 
<laughs> Woo. All right, guys. Well, if you want to learn more about Pure Bel Canto, again, check out our website, purebelcanto.com. That's where our online course is, where you can learn the basics of it, the history of it, and see if it's a good fit for you. You betcha. So thanks for watching today's video. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already.